Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time. And that is my video on cerebral palsy, which is one of the disabilities that I possess. And I have done one on my epilepsy. I will link it up here and down below as part of Epilepsy Awareness Week. But ever since I did that, I have wanted to do one on cerebral palsy. However, cerebral palsy is quite big and I just wanted to make sure that I did all that I could to make this video right and have the right information to give you guys because these videos are not just about me getting my story out there. They're about helping you guys demystify some of the disabilities out there. I'm going to start off with just doing a quick overview of what cerebral palsy is and then I'm going to get into my experiences with it because I have a lot to say and I do have a couple of other videos which just briefly go over my experiences during childhood, my experiences growing up with a disability which I'll link in a playlist but without further ado let's get into it. So what is cerebral palsy? Well it is an umbrella term for a physical disability which affects movement and posture. Cerebral palsy has its meaning in its name. Cerebral meaning of the brain and palsy refers to the lack of muscle control. So it's lack of muscle control and movement because the signal isn't getting to the brain. It is due to damage that happens during the mother's pregnancy or during straight out of birth. And generally it does not worsen over time. So that's just what it is. It's basically an umbrella term for a physical disability that affects movement in the brain. And it it's not worsened. It is permanent. It is lifelong. You will have it for the rest of your life, but it does not generally worsen over time. There are may, there are a couple of types of, of cerebral palsy, and I'm going to go over them now, just to give you a brief summary of what the different types are, because they go down in severity. So the main types are quadriplegia, which is a form of bilateral cerebral palsy, where both arms, legs, and mouth are affected. Then you've got diaplegia, which is another form of bilateral cerebral palsy, where both legs are affected and to a lesser extent the arms, but the mouth is fine. And then you have got hemiplegia, which is a form of unilateral cerebral palsy, whereas one side of your body is affected. That is what I have. I have spastic hemiplegia, where my muscles are really tight and it's really hard. The spastic one is 70 to 80% of the individuals that have cerebral palsy, so it's the most common. The other types that ones that you can have alongside the main type are dyskinetic. 6% of individuals have this one, which causes involuntary movements that are out of the person's control. And ataxic, 6% of individuals with this have cerebral, have cerebral damage that causes shaky movement and affects balance and some sense of positioning in space. Um, and then you have a mixed type. So some people might have, you know, qualities from some of these other types that are mixed together. So those are basically what the types are and what cerebral palsy is. Now I'm gonna go over some treatments. However, there is no known cure for cerebral palsy yet. There is no known way to tell if you have cerebral palsy pre-birth, uh, which people are obviously working on. There is some ways to get a better quality of life with cerebral palsy. And one of those ways particularly that I have gone through um, is casting. And I'll have a picture here, which is basically where they stretch out your muscle and then they wrap it in a cast to sort of give that muscle a, to help stretch it out. And then after a set amount of weeks, you will go in, get the cast cut off, and then you will start having physiotherapy, which is another option which just helps with movement and it was one of the ways that they that I and my family combated cerebral palsy. I didn't always want to do it because kid, but I found it, especially as I got older and I was a teenager, I found it helpful and I realised that it was needed and it's one of those things where you go into a centre and they, you know, put dots on your legs to figure out where your problems areas were and how to fix it. Um, it was really weird. I remember the places that I used to go were called the Spastic Centre. Um, the name of it has now changed to the Cerebral Palsy Alliance, but it was just, yeah, it was just going in there, getting your legs measured, getting your walking adjusted and then being like, okay, here's what we've got to do. Another effective way is usually they will have orthotics or splints and this is where they will like measure your leg and make you wear these plastic things. Um, I have ones that went from my foot up to the base of my knee and 
these were used to help sort of straighten my legs out and they were used after my surgery which is leading into the next point surgery um usually surgeons will go in and lengthen the muscles and rotate the bones and the muscles to make the legs straighter and this is usually done at the tail end of your pre-teen years so 12 11 12 those type of ages is where it's done because that way you are getting a more better chance to get used to it and your quality of life will improve it is really scary to go through that at a young age i remember being so terrified of just going under it but it's like we need you to do this because we want you to have a better quality of life and in the end i do end up having a better quality of life for it but as a kid you were just going through that so much and it's so scary and i just i have this memory of just being like they put the mask on me to help me go to sleep or, you know sleep and i just remember saying to my dad who was in the like the pre admissions room it's like it smells like rotting pumpkin and i just i got used to it and by the third century I was like just put the mask on me and let's get this done over with. So that is basically what the treatments and what cerebral palsy is. It 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 is scary, it is quite complex, but you do I, like I, I don't really know how to explain what I've gone through. I mean it may sound horrible but in the end it, I am lucky that I got a better quality of life out of it. So now I'm just gonna explain some of my experiences and I did do it in the first bit but I'm just going to expand on that a bit. I don't have many memories of my legs being free of casts like I have distinct memories of me having to wear casts and me having to sit at home and those memories are sort of intermingled. After my first surgery which was the one to strand out my legs I had four leg casts. I had to sleep in a splint where after my cast got taken off I had to sleep in a splint. I remember having to, I remember wanting to just like rip the splint off and just like pull my legs back into a comfortable position but no I had to sleep in a splint. Post-surgery I was in a wheelchair with like one of my legs extended and I had to, um, I just it was horrible. I could not walk. I could not do anything. My mum made me these pants which had like like those little eyelids that you just pull back because I could not wear normal pants so I had to wear those. And it was just, it took a toll on me. And in the end, yes, I'm upright. I'm walking. I have a better quality of life. But at that moment, I just felt so useless. Like I spent the majority of my time on a bed in the lounge room playing video games and I didn't want to be doing that and I reflect back on it and it just makes me so sad. So then I got better and I got I still had to use the wheelchair and then eventually after another round of surgery because the doctors have said we've over rotated one of your legs so we have to go back and fix it which for me was like <sighs> but I went back and then suddenly I was out from a wheelchair and into a K walker and I will have a picture of me in the K walker. K -walker walker is basically this thing which helps push your back up so you're upright because you do want to like slouch but you have to have your back up straight and it just helps keep you moving and keep you upright it's usually a silver it has two plastic things for where your hands hang on and you just you move it and then like you'll move you'll walk forward and it'll follow you i then moved on after i was getting too big for the k walker um i moved on to a walker which instead of having the bar at the back it was a proper walker with a seat and i could just wheel and i had a bar it was maroon it was fabulous I loved it so much um and it was just to help guide me and then eventually I am to where I am now where I have a walking stick I, at the start going from the walker to the walking stick I did have a bit of trouble so they got me two and so I used two until eventually I just got used to one and now I just use one whenever I go down to Sydney or whenever I travel extensively. Around town, around here, I know where all the cracks are, where all the falling bits are and so I can sort of just guide my way around so I don't really need it. However, if my legs are having a bad day or if my legs are not feeling their best, I will use a walking stick around town as a bit of extra insurance. So I did talk about physiotherapy, we did do that and orthotics. The orthotics I went through many iterations. As I said, I have had this since birth. I have been through so many orthotics. I used to have a black like box just full of orthotics. I had ones that went up to my knee. I had ones that were especially for my shoes. And I had rainbow ones that were for my shoes, which was fun. And that, it was good because every morning I'd have to wake up and I'd have to put on my brother's 
footy socks and have to put on the orthotics to walk out into the kitchen and it never really I never really thought twice about it like I never really was like I don't look good in these orthotics I was more like I need these for walking I was never really concerned with my appearance because it was just part of what I had to do and it was you know in winter you could get away with it but in summer everyone's staring at you everyone's like it was really like people were looking at me but I was just like I need to use these I don't care and so now I'm at the point where I don't need orthotics, but I still need to use a walking stick. I can walk a fair distance, but I do need to take a break. And so the ways that I get around that is that I do yoga. I have like a playlist on here that I play through YouTube and I will just do that because it gives me a chance to stretch my muscles and gives me a chance to work at my pace. Um, when I go to conventions, because I travel to conventions, I will give myself a three hour walking limit and then I have to find seating because otherwise my legs get sore and get and they start pulling and they start getting tight and it hurts it hurts so much um so i will do that however sometimes the convention does not have seating so i have to go out of the convention and just sit down outside of it but i will try to find something inside the convention. I also have to make sure that I have a, you know, make sure everywhere I stay has disabled facilities and stuff like that. And it's really just making sure that I have enough support and that to get around. And it's, it's not an easy life, but it's the one that I've got and I enjoy it. So I hope that you guys have found this found this um, interesting. I don't know if I'll talk about this again, but I think it's important to share my experience because my experience is going to be different to everyone else's. But if you take away anything from this video, whether it's more learning about cerebral palsy or more learning about me and my experiences, um, leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you guys in the next video.